the series itself, and and I guess I'll start with LeBron's greatness. You wrote a column about the idea that that Dylan Brooks is is not wrong that LeBron is old. Uh, he's right about that, but about every other damn thing, he got it wrong. Like, what was last night like? You ever feel like the other team made a player have a great game? Oh, not sure, that the, yeah. Not that the player was just singularly great, but the other team played so dumb, it played into the great player's <laughs> hands and he just happened to take it. That's what it felt like last night because the Grizzlies did everything they could to lose the game. Like, you know, uh, Taylor Jenkins, the Grizzlies coach, he saw, called it the character game. He said, you know, we're at our, our best when we play with swagger and confidence. And some players play like that. You know, like Desmond Blunt Bain, until he ran out of gas. Like Desmond Bain ran out of gas by the end of the night. But when he hit that three to put them up seven, we hadn't heard from LeBron throughout that game. Like if it wasn't for D'Angelo Russell, and this is not give D'Angelo Russell all the credit, but none of that stuff would have ever happened if D'Angelo Russell didn't hit nine straight and sort of rescue the Lakers out of the spot that they were in. This wasn't your traditional LeBron tour de force game. But he does recognize if a game's there for the taking, why not take it? And that's kind of, I felt like, what he did. And the Grizzlies are just, put it like this, your Sacramento Kings are what we thought the Grizzlies would be this year. As far as the confidence, yeah. the moxie, being able yeah. to go toe-to-toe with an established team and to not lose games just by being dumb. Sacramento has lost two games, but they haven't lost two games by being dumb. The Grizzlies have lost two games by and large, or at least one game, by being dumb. Highlight that more, Vinny. What what what's your short list of plays that come to the forefront of your mind? It, it you know for me it's gonna sound really silly, but the the D'Angelo Russell the first three for Jaron Jackson to be switched out on him and Austin Reeves drives and Jaron Jackson who loves going for the shot block just puts himself in no man's land. Right, he was not in position to defend the pass, not in position to block a shot, and he leaves D'Angelo Russell open. Now to be to be fair. Russell is not has not played well this series, right? So you leave him open, the floodgates open, he hits nine straight. Then the LeBron play where he gets the layup to push the game into overtime, you know he wants to drive right. And I get that he has Xavier Tillman on him, and Xavier's a bigger player. He's more five playing four as opposed to four playing four. But where's where's your help? Dylan Brooks slides over but but gets caught in no man's land. Like just certain game plan mistakes coming out of timeouts that the attention, the detail says to me that they're not ready. And the whole Dylan Brooks experience, forget him not talking. Let's just focus on Dylan Brooks on the floor. The dumb things that he does, getting riled up, letting the Staples Center crowd get in his head and everything else. Like you can't have that level of distraction when you're trying to overcome huge losses on your personnel and you're defending you know, one of the game's best players in LeBron. Like, you can't let those things happen. So just those are just three things in a multitude of them, and some coaching mistakes too, because Luke Kennard wasn't on the floor when you needed three-point shooting and you were 9 of 42 from three, and your best three-point shooter is on the bench for most of the game. Yeah, how about Dylan Brooks' just, like, general view of his offensive game? And, like, that is a season-long, career-long you said his view version of, of what you're talking offensive about. Offensive game. Does he have an offensive game? In his mind, he does, and that's the problem, right? I mean, like this idea that he is like a Patrick Beverly, a Draymond Green type mold. It's like those guys accept what they are offensively. He does. Yeah, he's in a weird spot. Or the Grizzlies are in a weird spot with him, right? Because Ja's going to be John. Ja, if you're going to be in the Ja Morant business, you need someone steady next to him, at least in my opinion. And Dylan Brooks is neither a great shooter nor a great athlete, but he is a great defender. You know, I, I did put him on one of my all-defense teams, and I have no regrets about that. But the, the, the wildness and the, the fluctuations in how he plays, especially offensively, he takes some of that stuff away. When you take dumb shots and you force the cross-matching on the other end, you're giving a Lakers team that's honestly not very good a lot of advantages that they wouldn't have otherwise. And if Dylan Brooks played a little bit smarter, and I know that's an oxymoron, Dylan Brooks playing smart, but if he took advantage of the opportunities in front of him as opposed to trying to dictate the game on his own terms, he'd be a lot better off. Like, hey, Jock, come over here for a DHO instead of like, "Eh, let me get mine right now. It's Dylan Brooks time, baby. That's what time it is. 
So he's second on the, I'm looking at it here. He's second on the team in this series in threes. That's a mistake. Uh, 22.2%. Only Desmond is shooting more and, and Jaws right below him. Um, you know, and we've talked a lot, Vinny, about the maturity stuff. And I kind of like your Kings parallel. It, it, I'll be honest. It's a lot for me to wrap my head around. Cause I'm just so programmed to think that Kings represents dysfunction and, and all that type of stuff. But they are, to their credit right now, we can kind of segue into that series. The Kings are, they are, they are rolling with what, excuse me, what they have and who they are. And they're letting the results, you know, good or bad, speak for themselves. That is the personality difference between these two teams. As Slater and I have talked about, and he's obviously got such a good read on Mike Brown from his time with the Warriors and Slater being around him. Mike Brown and that team, like when you, let's, let's compare Dylan Brooks, Draymond Green two guys who who want to poke the bear all the time. Mike Brown has told the Kings, do not engage with that man. Like, stop talking to him. Don't do exactly what Dylan Brooks did to the Lakers. It doesn't mean they're going to win the series. doesn't mean it's going to work. I do think that down the road, you talk about organizational culture, maturity, you know, sustainability, the length of your runway, it, it's a better formula than what the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies are just like, we're going to burn – hot and bright for as long as we can. And it ain't going to be that long. And, and, you know, Jaws going to try to jump 15 feet in the air and hope he doesn't break his leg. And, and Dylan's going to, you know, average seven threes a game. Um, it's just wild how they are attacking their thing. And, and yeah, the contrast to the Kings is, is, is pretty fascinating. Well, for me, I would respect the Grizzlies a lot more if they stay consistent with who they are. If you're going to be brash and confident and cocky and talk all types of, I, can I cuss on here? Yeah. Let it talk all types of yeah. shit. Then be that way all the time, right? If you're down 3-1, you still going to say, hey, we think we're the better team. We got two games left on our home floor, that sort of thing. Like, stay true to your character. Be who you are. The Kings, I feel like, are more consistent to who they are. I don't think they're trying to – they don't engage with Draymond Green, but they don't shy away from him either. I definitely felt like they baited Draymond Green. Like they kept needling him and needling him and needling him. And then not like he snapped, but you put him in a position. You hold, you grab, you clutch, you right. play right, basketball. Right. And if you know that that person is a little more, you know, susceptible to losing his cool, that's fine. But we're doing things on our terms. Mike Brown says, don't get in, don't get engaged with him verbally. But it doesn't mean you don't tweak him on the floor. It 100%. doesn't mean that you try to bring out the worst attributes in him to put him in situations where he may react. And I felt like that's what they did to their advantage, which I have zero problem with. And even in game four, I know that there's a lot of people that's going to have a lot of quibbles with the way things maybe ended. But I felt like from the last possession, from the moment that they were down 10 to end the third quarter, they stayed the course and stayed true to who they who they were. We're going to play fast. We're going to play. We're going to play De'Aaron Fox. We're going to play Malik Monk. Like they have a confidence in who they are. For for there to be very little sweat equity in terms of playoff basketball, guys, they act like they've been here before. They're not straying from. You can have a bad game. Everybody has a bad game, but they don't seem like they're straying from their own ethos in this series like they're not going to beat themselves in that way they may like you said they may lose the series but they'll lose the series on their terms if they lose right right yeah and they, they're the grit that you're talking about is there when draymond stands over keegan murray and i think tells him some version of get the hell up and he was giving keegan a hard time for staying on the ground pretty long early in that game four who's in his face De'Aaron's in his face like De'Aaron actually stuck you know stuck up for his guy and so when they need to, they're doing that. But but the chirping on the bench, they're keeping to a minimum. Uh, and listen, they they showed that fight in the fourth quarter. I texted a, a you know a buddy of mine who's a Kings fan. He hit me after the third quarter. Oh man, this is not good. They're down ten. And I wrote back like they're cooked. Like that's, that's a wrap. You know. And they they came out like gangbusters from there. You you hear Mike post game too. I mean, he was kind of critical of uh, of some of their um, sloppiness or over aggressiveness in transition. And saying they were just driving into two guys and begging for fouls. They want them to play fast, but they need to be smarter with all that. There's also, again, what we were talking about with the Grizzlies earlier. I just think there's a level of accountability. Like, even yeah. after a game like that, what must they clean up? And he's uh, coming out, he's telling the public, which means we know he's telling his team. 
Yeah, and that was very Sabonis specific, that criticism, I think. Um, and meanwhile, we keep doing the contrast, but like, you know, Taylor Jenkins, I just if I hear him say one more time that that our swag is what got us here, like cool. Like I, I don't know, that's not exactly putting your guys in a position to win. 